Pani Aleksandra, thank you very much for accepting this invitation for the interview, but uh, more um, thank you for all the support your city and your people are uh, providing to Ukraine. It's very appreciated at all levels, at national and local levels and people to people level. I read recently and I was speaking about this with the mayor of Mariupol that uh, you did a very nice uh, step uh, opening a square uh, for Mariupol in uh, Gdansk and also the location was chosen quite uh, nicely in front of uh, Russian consul. How was it perceived and what are other like the solidarity steps that we can do then foreign cities can do to support Ukrainian cities. First of all, thank you very much for this opportunity to be your guest um, today. Secondly, to reply to your question, which is um, which is quite complex. Well, in my opinion, um, we all need, although we have already almost mo yeah, more than five months of this year Russian aggression to Ukraine, because in my opinion, public opinion, worldwide opinion, is not really aware of the situation. The war actually lasts uh, since 2014, not only uh, since uh, 24th uh, of February, but this lasts more than five months. And we need, uh, of course, different um, way of, uh, of acting. We need both. We need symbolic actions like uh, this one with uh, the square in one of the districts of, of, of Gdansk, really close to, to Russian consulate, the square named by the uh, unanimous decision of um, uh, City Council of Gdansk. The name was given uh, he Heroes of, of, of Mariupol. And actually, uh, this was one of the most uh, moving and touching uh, lesson we all uh, took when mayor of Mariupol, our sister city, uh, took part um, uh, during uh, city council uh, seat session. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was in March or April, I'm not quite sure, but anyway, this spring. And actually, he also asked us if it is possible to honor in a symbolic way uh, people, um, heroic people of, of Mariupol and Mariupol itself. Um, so in the very early beginning of July, uh, we opened this, um, this, this place. And what was really moving, uh, there were present both uh, Ukrainian and Polish people. But to me, it was very important that there were also present uh, people who survived after Second World War, who were active um, on the Polish side in uh, Armia Krajowa, uh, though they today are 92, 93, 95 years old, they uh, were present because for them this is also very important symbolic, not only situation, but they know what war really means. And this is why they, they, they wanted also to be present. But apart from different symbolic actions, like uh, you can see, I wear actually for all those months, Ukrainian flag or both Polish and Ukrainian flags. Uh, we also um, still have uh, in main points um, on the streets, uh, Ukrainian and Polish flags, also tramways and uh, our public buses have all those uh, flags. And we really don't know how long they will hang. Um, of course, the best situation will be to take them uh, off uh, when the war will finish. And actually, this is the first aim. What uh, we as a local authorities, as a mayors, but also as a public worldwide opinion should really push uh, to, to finish the war. But apart from this, we need to help now and today um, and support people who are already uh, present, uh, are already here in, in Gdansk, but also we need to uh, support so, so people. Uh, how many Ukrainians moved to, to Gdansk? Yeah, this is uh, actually one of the 
uh, questions which is the most often uh, asked um, and uh, it, it's really not so easy to uh, reply to this question because they are free people so um, we cannot count them or ask them to uh, to be counted but uh, we have some data of people who Uh, already registered or uh, of people who send um, their kids to school and so on and so on. Our city, city of Gdańsk, is yeah, almost uh, half a million people. And our estimation is that around 150,000 people uh, could be present here um, of Ukraine. And um, and this is this uh, new new wave in a sense after after twenty uh, fourth of, of February, um, but um, there are not um, so many people really asking for help because uh, Ukrainians are really um, well organized uh, and quite quickly finding the jobs um, also. They have friends or families here, or some of them went went farther and brought. Um, we are we are uh, during summer holidays at schools, but um, in June we had uh, around three uh, thousand and five hundred pupils at our schools out of the whole number of eighty um, thousand pupils but as far as we know there are still children uh, who took uh, part in online learning in ukraine what will happen after first of september no one knows i saw that basically the next day after the uh, russia started the uh, invasion uh, uh, you open a center called uh, Gdansk Pomaga Ukraine uh, um, and you have partner cities. So basically the question is how were you uh, collecting the request and how did you know whom to help? Whether it was uh, organized with your partner cities or uh, people were addressing because it's very interesting for us to learn because now we will uh, also coordinate the Uh, everything what is related to the reconstruction of uh, Ukrainian uh, cities and maybe some ideas or some mechanisms could be uh, borrowed uh, from this experience you had. Okay, so there are several things. Uh, one is uh, helping people who are here in Gdansk and the other is to support as much as we can our uh, partner cities or cities uh, or regions or areas uh, in Ukraine. So, um, first of all, we organized um, in our uh, foundation, uh, Gdansk Foundation, and uh, this is maybe quite interesting also for um, other mayors or people governing the, um, the regions or the, or the local communities, because during the pandemic of COVID-19, uh, we also organized um, Gdansk Helps. And it was um, an online online system where we put people together. Of course, there was uh, there is an info info line and so on and so on. But in general, this is the uh, internet system um, uh, on on the website where we put people together. Those who say I need help, this and this and this, and those who say. Okay, I have time, I can help, I can drive, I can do this and this. And it really um, helped us during a pandemic of COVID-19. And on the same base, we created um, our system, Gdansk Helps Ukraine. And uh, we put people together um, um, with uh, their needs not only comp but not only ordinary citizens but also companies and so on and so on and i i must say that um, we managed to organize for example three and a five million uh, polish lotus uh, only by payments of of, of, of the citizens and the, and the companies for example we sent uh, special medicines for cancer uh, patients in one to one of the hospitals in in kiev for some money which were sent uh, 
also by our sister cities from Rotterdam. This is um, putting people together because we received uh, requests from Germany, the Netherlands or other places what we can do you are closer so maybe you know exactly what it, what is needed so we are sort of sort of hub and uh, what is really important also for me also my cooperatives were um, last month in june uh, visiting not only kiev not only lviv but also uh, borodjanka herson uh, irpien and other places uh, but um, those were people who are taking care in my city uh, for all communal infrastructure water supply uh, and so on and so on because we know exactly that this reconstruction we need to divide it for this what is needed now uh, immediately because people need to live quite normally in the city and for this what will be uh, the proper reconstruction when uh, it will be after the after the war and uh, this is something that we can really share the uh, experience like uh, here in Gdansk for example we had friends from Bremen in Germany or Kalmar in Sweden those who helped us um, 30 years ago uh, when we were at the very early beginning of uh, building a new city. Are Ukrainian mayors uh, asking for this uh, support for reconstruction already? Because uh, basically the dialogue at the different levels has uh, started already. And you are very right that um, people are talking a lot about like building schools and hospitals, but communal infrastructure suffered a lot. And in Mykolaiv, there was this shortage of drinkable water. And that was basically a big a big catastrophe for, for Ukraine and for, for the citizens. So are they... Are they asking, and, and, and if yes, what are they asking? The expertise, rather support, financial support, or, and, and how you think in the future this cooperation can be, can be done? They are asking for different things. Uh, sometimes uh, we cannot fulfill those requests. Um, and um, behind my back, you can see also European uh, flag, because uh, in the very early beginning of July, during the conference in Lugano on reconstruction, there were also a different decision taken on the um, higher levels than only city levels. Everyone knows that um, Ukraine will need a lot of money to rebuild this reconstruction and even uh, my city. And even nowadays, this is really against the law to create a communal infrastructure out outside my city because I have to spend um, the taxes who are paid, which are paid here in Gdansk for this, what, is, um, what serves the citizens of Gdansk. So this is also a, a legal, um, legal problem that needs to, need to be solved. But what is really important, they also, uh, the, the mayors are also asking for the advice how to do it. Some of them are really aware of the situation that um, not the whole infrastructure can be done uh, on a permanent um, level because in some areas, let's be honest, 20% of the Ukrainian um, territory is under a Russian occupation, uh, uh, so not every in every single um, place you can really build the infrastructure. We have also close re uh, relation with uh, with Andrei Sadov from uh, from Lviv. Let's be honest, Lviv is yet yeah, on the safe side, though some incidents are, are happened. But for example, he really pushes the project called uh, Unbroken for building um, not only hospital, but also center for for the people who suffered from, from the war. And um, the education center, I think. Yes, yes, yes. So this is uh, all what we are trying to support. Not always it is possible just to send money or to send uh, some kind of infrastructure. Actually, what we did 
for for Borodjanka. We, we sent some parts of infrastructure, but um, any Polish city will not be able to do it for the whole Ukraine. And this is this is quite quite obvious. Yes, but here I mean more like the expertise because basically what we see here, and I'm living now in in Warsaw temporarily, yes, and then I see how well organized is the uh, infrastructure for bicycles. Uh, Like the city is accessible and that's taking into account how many people with disabilities will stay after the war in Ukraine. That needs to be done not only in cities like Mariupol, Kharkiv or Mykolaiv, but in Lviv as well, because lots of people are moving there and that's uh, important. So we would need definitely the expertise on how to make cities effective. You know, because again, it's not the question only to attract lots of money, but spend them effectively. And related. And, to- and one more thing, if yeah. I only might to add, of course, to make, uh, make our local communities accessible, but also uh, we have really serious issue regarding uh, climate change or climate crisis. And this is also a topic, as if you are in Warsaw, you know that this is a topic. Um, very lively uh, now in Poland, but also this is a topic also for for U- Ukraine. There is a big problem for the heating uh, season now, and uh, that's why we are thinking that um, rebuilding cities it's important also to take energy efficiency into account and all yeah. everything what is related to climate change. And that's again we will learn from you uh, and from European cities who are more advanced yeah. uh, in that. I've also read that uh, not only people. People like refugees uh, came here, but uh, also there was a relocation of uh, businesses and lots of IT companies came uh, to Poland, or at least part of their offices were relocated. It was the case of Cyclum and and, uh, Logitech, if I'm not mistaken. But the question is why they are choosing um, uh, Gdańsk? Like what is like there, what is maybe like the the advantage. And then again, when we will be ready to take them back, because I do hope that lots of people want to come back. You know, what should we do in Ukrainian cities so they could get back? It's not only about safety, but I presume the comfort of living, the easy of making business, like the investment climate and, and, and just a comfort of life for citizens. Of course, every single mayor of the city uh, wants uh, his or her city to grow. And uh, for for this, you really need uh, creative people. But um, one thing which I really, really would like to stress, I, uh, I really would like uh, Ukrainian people uh, to build or rebuild their own country. Now, of course, I need creative and hardworking people also here in Gdansk, but my dream is and my deepest wish is to um, let them create uh, such conditions that they want to not only come back, but also um, rebuild uh, rebuild the, the, the state. Um, well, Gdansk, um, well, uh, we are winning uh, different uh, conquests for a place where you feel uh, good, where we have good quality of living. This is, my, in my opinion, there are um, several um, uh, reasons why is it so. Not only um, Baltic Sea, not only sand beaches, and a nice place where you can go and have a and have a have a walk. But also uh, better, um, better air and less air pollution. This is something what really people are now taking into consideration. Secondly, what you already mentioned about Warsaw, this is also um, uh, something what we really, really stress um, as our investment policy, uh, creating um, accessible city, city where people also can ride a bicycle, not only for weekend or after work, but also use a bicycle um, uh, as um, everyday, um, everyday for, for the everyday life on the way to work or, or to school. So those are things which people, in my opinion, take into consideration. Of course, our um, our history um, and something what, uh, in my opinion, is also in a symbolic way um, important. 
in our city, Second World War began on the 1st September of 1939, but also with um, creation of the Solidarity Movement, um, the symbolic end of the um, Iron Curtain of the division of the world after Second World War finished or started to finish. Um, and it all uh, be began here, here in Gdansk. And therefore, um, I really think that people who are choosing um, Gdansk for, for living are also looking for a place with open-minded uh, people for whom um, certain values as um, uh, human dignity, equality, our freedom, solidarity, and so on and so on are, are important. And um, with our policy, which is... Um, official policy of the city. We have um, a model of equal treatment. We have model of integration of immigrants. Policies adopted by the, um, by, by, the, by the city council. This is something what we are trying to do step by step to create a city where everyone, no matter if you were born here, like, like me and my parents and my grandparents arrived to the city in 1945 or like people who arrived here two months ago, so they, they could feel here good. That's uh, very important. And this engagement of uh, citizens is really uh, one of the successful uh, elements, I think, of uh, city management. Ukrainian cities are trying to build partnership with uh, foreign cities, and especially it was like really intensified after this uh, aggression. Uh, but um, also, you have the experience of what is called tree city. How um, how successful it is that? And also, again, what we can learn from this? Because uh, before um, uh, the February twenty fourth, one of the most successful reform was the decentralization reform. The mayors got, or cities and communities got more power, more uh, financial resources, and they were like developing communities more and more. How the example of three cities could be probably used in, in Ukraine, how helpful it can be? We also call it, uh, though we don't have any legal instruments, we also call it our area, metropolitan area um, of, of, of Gdansk. Though, as I as I um, as I just mentioned, we we don't have any any legal instruments on the um, adopted by the Polish Polish Parliament, um, unfortunately. Uh, but cooperation is never easy, um, especially when you have uh, ambitious uh, ambitious cities uh, or uh, smaller, bigger. This, uh, this is not really that important, but um, we are mayor of Gdynia, Sopot, uh, Wejherowo, Czech, uh, Prusz Gdański. We are all aware that um, our inhabitants are really mixing their everyday activities because one can um, have a flat in Gdynia, learn in Sopot and work in Gdansk and so on and so on. Therefore, um, we really need this cooperation, for example, for the public transportation system, which is not easy uh, without uh, any legal instrument. So this is more like goodwill uh, that we created uh, an association of uh, 51 um, smaller, bigger communities uh, in our metropolitan area, for example, to um, not only share the experience, but also to, um, to um, create a more comfortable life on different uh, fields, uh, social policy, and so on and so on. Um, in my opinion, uh, as you look at the Ukrainian map, there are also some uh, areas that could be metropolitan area, of course, Kiev area, this is, this is obvious. But um, in my opinion, there are more and more um, places like this. So we really can share the experiences. But um, what is really important uh, on this national level, level of legal acts, uh, we really need also support, which is not, as I said, done already in Poland. Not yet. Not yet. 
Okay, I, I really I, I agree with you, and I do believe that it, if it's well built, it can be beneficial, especially that there are lots of people coming to big cities to work during the day or to study, as you mentioned. So that's uh, very important. Also, an important question is uh, related to the fact that um, uh, mayors can play a big role. And I know that you being also part of committee of regions at the level of the EU, you initiated lots of support uh, for uh, Ukraine. And there was a video, a very touchy uh, video for where 300 city leaders uh, basically asked to stop trading with the aggressor. We Europeans pay $1 billion a day to finance Putin's army. Todas las acciones militares contra civiles se han de aturar inmediatamente. No podemos aceptar que los cosiddetti corredores humanitarios abiertos del ejército ruso... Si no agimos de todo de suite, la más grande crisis humanitaria desde la Segunda Guerra Mundial... How? What is the role the mayors can play? Uh, because it's bigger than just a local level. I think they can uh, they can really reach uh, the national levels and international uh, level. And how successful was this campaign? How can we help to really avoid this Ukraine fatigue? Because people want to live normal life, you know. Uh, that's for some countries and cities, it's happening far away. So, what is the role of mayors here? Uh, thank you very much for this question. Um, not only Benjamin Barber uh, is uh, saw already role uh, and growing role of mayors all over all over the the world. Um, I, I'm really really glad that um, a meeting uh, which uh, me and my colleagues uh, organized online meetings uh, meeting with um, uh, 300 mayors and representatives of, of cities and regions uh, from all over Europe and also there were people from the United States and and, and Taiwan. Um, we uh, stated what you already mentioned and in my opinion for us sometimes this is easier um, to say something in public uh, for example stop financing uh, the war by buying russian coal or oil and so on and so on then uh, then at the level of the national government so in this case um, we also see our role as a not only representative uh, representatives of our inhabitants, but also as a, um, a power who can uh, push uh, national governments and also U uh, European institutions. And actually, this happened. Okay, maybe we cannot be fully uh, satisfied because we see um, first, second, third. Now I think it is sixth. Um, a series of, of sanctions and uh, of course everyone can say we must go further and also this I can say also to Polish government as well um, but it, it helps in my opinion this was, this was and is still important that uh, we can say a little bit more and really push um, our forces and also um, talk to uh, public opinion to make them aware of some um, global uh, aspects uh, of uh, of this of this war. What would be the most either influential platform for mayors, you know, to play the role, or maybe you think that like this peer to peer. Uh, cooperation or communication is important. So, for instance, you mentioned Rotterdam, so you speak with the mayor of uh, Rotterdam, whom I personally like very much, and I'm happy to, to, to have met him before. And um, what would be the most effective way, and also for Ukrainian mayors to address their international colleagues? First of all, um, I was not really aware of the fact, no one was aware of the situation because in November last year I, I became a, a chair of working group committee of the regions and Ukraine. And uh, when we had our first meeting in November, uh, we were actually showing, for example, um, things which already happened, for example, in my Mariupol regarding transparency, um, anti-corruption policy, uh, transparency of international investments, and so on and so on. 
So, as you mentioned, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, cooperation, and this is something, uh, in my opinion, the most um, fruitful and the, bringing the most uh, efficient um, efficient uh, uh, results. But um, something what we uh, not always think about is the um, field of values. Um, Okay, we are members of the European com com community. It means that we uh, together, Poland, Germany, Austria, France, and so on and so on, that we share some values. And in my opinion, this is really important to um, keep uh, and uh, keep on reminding the whole world that actually Ukrainians are now fighting for those values because not everyone is really aware of the situation. So on the one hand, um, very practical issues, peer-to-peer -peer cooperation, sharing experiences, but also building common values platform. That's what we also try to do with the International May Summit. And I would be so happy to invite you for one in Ukraine, but most probably the, the recent one will be taking place in Poland. Again, not only to ensure safety for people, for participants, but also to thank Polish uh, cities and the uh, Polish community for all this uh, help. But I do hope that in the future, we will be happy to welcome you in Ukraine and to show you how nice, rebuilt uh, Ukrainian cities are. Thank you for, the, uh, for everything we learned from you. And uh, um, also uh, on a personal level, I would like to send you a uh, thank you for the um, great uh, women leadership uh, um, example, because we know that even at the uh, uh, world level, basically there are something like 5% of uh, mayors women, you know, so that's very important. In Ukraine, we have less. You, you know it, you meet your colleagues those are mostly men and that's important also to show that uh, women leadership is is a great tool to make uh, great changes thank you very much but um, in my opinion uh, not only me personally but the whole world should be really uh, grateful um, to all brave ukrainians but being grateful is one thing but giving real support real support uh, like in poland we just finished in uh, I think on Sunday, um, collecting the money for Bayraktar. Yeah. Uh, um, this is something what is extremely needed. And uh, there is really no time to discuss, to think, to do. But re really, we need to act. And this is something what is the most important for, for mayors all over the world, I guess. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pani Alexandra. Thank you.